Hello there, one and all, and welcome to episode 278 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, live on YouTube. Thank you very much for tuning in, whether you're watching live or you're watching recording. We've got a very, very special feature length, that which means an hour-long video ahead of us. First comment for this one goes to Sue, who says, love Chanel and love Persilaise. Thank you very much, Sue. Can't wait to hear your top 10. Uh, Rich is here as well saying hello. James is here too. So is Holly and Frag Chai Town saying greetings from Illinois. You are all very welcome. And I expect, this is me going into teacher mode for five seconds, I expect lots and lots of interaction uh, from you today because you are bound to have a lot to say about the topic of today's video because we are going to be doing a top 10. And it feels like it's been a little while since we've done a top 10, even though I'm I'm, sh I'm sure it hasn't. Maybe it's been a while since we've done a top 10 on a particular brand, but we are doing a top 10 on, I feel like saying, on a, on a little known brand, you know, a brand that's just starting out and needs a little bit of a gentle nudge, uh, a gentle push from us fragrance enthusiasts. It's a brand some of you may have heard of called Chanel. Um, more comments coming through. James says, love your shirt. Thank you very much, sir. Oh my God, says Catherine. I've never been live before. Well, you're very welcome. You are actually live now. Where are you watching from, Catherine, if you don't mind my asking? Uh, Azuki2 says, hello. Chang is here from Paris. A hot, sunny day here. Oh, very jealous. It has been raining nonstop in the south of England. Um, Germs says, here we go. Um, oh, Catherine is in Cincinnati. Thank you very much. Am I the only fragrance enthusiast without Chanel perfume, says Frag Chai Town. Um, you're probably not the only one, but I would imagine you are in a minority. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, is there a particular reason why it, it, are you sort of opposed to them on principle or is it just because you haven't found a single one that you that you like which is absolutely fair enough we need to make a start i'm going to be checking out the comments as we go um because even though this is a top 10 that there are going to be at least two tangents as we go well at least one tangent possibly two tangents as we go along and i also just need to put things in a tiny little bit of context just very very quickly before we carry on um those of you who've been following my work for a while uh particularly on the blog so those of you who've been loyal readers will be aware that quite some time ago i actually did a top five chanel perfumes over on persilase.com over on the blog as part of a a series that we then called, uh, I then called, because I actually was a collaboration with a few other writers, we called the series Supercent. Um, and we we looked at a few brands. And, and I think that's why um, I haven't done a top 10 Chanel video here on YouTube, because I thought, well, that blog post is still there. But but I've decided that actually, it, it's been so long since those blog, blog posts that I can almost... Um, ignore them and, and treat everything as a, as a blank slate again. So I, I may consider looking at some of the brands on which I did Supercent blog posts, and I, I, I may I may consider doing videos on them here on YouTube. More people saying hello. Hello, Mr. Persilase, glad to catch a, a live again, says Cutie Camille. Are we counting up or down, says Sue. Okay, very good question. We are neither counting up nor down. This is, these are, these are the top 10 in the sense. <clears throat> that they are the best 10 that I'm just presenting to you as a best 10. It's difficult enough choosing 10, but actually putting them in some kind of rank order, I think, is just near impossible. So that it isn't it isn't counting up or down. David is here too. Stephen says hello from Teesside. David says, looking fantastic as always, Mr. Pete. Thank you very much. So that's very, very kind. We have to dress up for Chanel, right? And we have to dress up for you. Um, hello from Virginia, says Angie Matney. This should be fun. Um... I wonder how many of these 10 we'll be able to guess, says Holly. Lots, so many comments coming already. I, I will just have to kind of keep an eye on them and not be able to read every single one. And another thing that I should say is that this list is based on perfumes which are currently in production. Uh, a, a couple of people got in touch when I announced this video and said, when I'm drawing up my list, could I please include discontinued scents? And I, I think the simple answer to that is, is no, I don't think I can. I didn't used to include discontinued scents when I did Super Scent over on the blog either, because I think that just makes things too complicated. For one, uh, there are lots of discontinued scents from brands that I've never even tried. Certainly the old Chanel's that aren't ex in existence anymore, I've never tried them. So I wouldn't um, have been able to choose them anyway. I think Mr. P was born to wear velvet, says Natalia. Actually, this isn't velvet. This this is this is cotton with a sort of layer of of, of lacy stuff over it. But but I, I I agree. I think I was born to wear well, well, 
wear velvet as well. Um, does that rule, says Woozy, include reformulations and current state? In in a word, yes. Um, as far as possible, I'm taking into account the state that they are currently available in. So, for instance, I'm, I know a lot of you are like three steps ahead of me already and are thinking, OK, but the exclusives are now all EDPs rather than EDTs. So as far as possible, I've been thinking about the EDPs rather than the e, rather than the EDTs, except of course in the case of the ones which are available as extras. This is so. This is this video I can see is just going to be the biggest geek out. I can just imagine if anybody who isn't as geeky as we are searches for top ten Chanel perfumes on YouTube and comes to this video, they're just going to they're either going to go down the most amazing rabbit hole of perfume geekery ever. Or they're going to think, oh, my God, these people have way too much time on their hands. <laughs> it's going to be one or the other. Um, yeah, lots of people are already talking about uh, 28 La Pausa. Um, OK, we, we need to start. We need to start because we're already at the six minute mark. And this video cannot take longer than an hour. So we are going to start with a, a bit of a tangent because I am telling you right now that this video is going to be a little bit of a cheat in that it's not actually be a, going to be a top 10, it's going to be a top 11, kind of. Because I thought th there, is, there, is, there is one that you can all guess straight away um, is in the top 10. And I thought, okay, well, since it's that obvious that it's in the top 10, since everybody will be able to work, figure out that because I love it so much, it's going to be in the top 10. I thought, let's just let's just get it out of the way first, stick it on its own pedestal, and then do a further 10 videos so that we kind of end up with a top 11. And of course, the video, the, the video, the one that I'm referring to, as you all know, is Bleu de Chanel. Just testing, just to, somebody actually beat me to that <laughs> quip. Uh, woozy, well done. No, it is, of course, this one, uh, number five, composed in 1922. Not only do I think it is actually still the best Chanel fragrance, um, I, I think it's one of the most beautiful things ever made, and I'm not going to spend a great deal of time about it, I, uh, because I've done not just one, but I think three videos on it uh, here on YouTube in the past, and I have linked to one of the videos already in the video description below. And just in case, um, Natalia says, I knew there's no way our captain would keep it to a list of 10. <laughs> captain, I like it. Um, just in case any of you are wondering, I'm happy to include all versions of uh, number five here in this kind of symbolic representation of number five, except for a number five law. So I'm um, the, the Parfum, the EDT, the EDP and Eau Premiere, I absolutely adore, I love. The low, I think, is less successful. So here we are, number five, all hail, still beautiful, still relevant, still fascinating, still, still, still makes me skip, uh, you know, skip makes my heart skip a beat whenever Madame Persolet wears it and makes me, stops me dead in my tracks. Um, and I know some people can't take it, but what can I say? And I, I still think it's one of the great, greatest things ever made. Um, I just saw somebody saying, yeah, Sue says, I have a half liter of Chanel number no. five. Oh, in what concentration? Where's the Baccarat bottle, says Woozy. Yeah, I notice it's still on the website, but you now have to, now it's a sort of price on demand. I have no idea what that means. Uh, Cynthia says, I was able to catch Cristal EDT in stock, and sadly, it is very weak, hoping it improves over time. Ah. Uh, David, oh, this is going back to what I told you about in another video about a colleague. I tried the Chance EDP and Mademoiselle Intense combo, and it really works. Thanks, Mr. P. Well, actually, I need to kill a colleague. I think I will be seeing her tomorrow. I should be seeing her tomorrow, so I may say that her her um, layering tip has gone viral. Can we say it's gone viral if you're doing it, David? I think we can say it's gone viral. Okay. We are going to start this top 10, 11 by actually just going one year ahead, uh, one year after uh, number five. So number five was made in 1921, and we are going to now go to 1922 to present you with uh, number 22, 
which I am very, very fortunate. Here we go, Catherine says number 22, which I was very fortunate to be able to get a little while ago in the extra form. Um, there's not going to be space for all of the bottles here. Sorry, the boxes. So I think I'll just sort of put the boxes aside and keep the bottles here. Let us let us smell this. And and um, I th I think it's no coincidence that Ernest Bo, who made number five as well, obviously, I think it's no coincidence that he released or made um, number twenty two a year after number five, because they are, as many of you will know, very, very, very similar to each other. Um, number 22 in all forms is amazing, says Woozy. Yes, including the EDP. Holly says, is this my sign to go on a birthday extra binge? Um, I don't know when your birthday is, and I don't know how much of a binge you can go on, but I would say that some of them, some of the Chanel extras really need to be in everybody's collection. That they, they, they are just, I mean, I did a whole video on those as well, didn't I? They're just something else. Anyway, allow me to enjoy this moment. Number 22, number 22 in extra. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be going like this for this whole video, aren't I? I could, I could just weep. I could weep tears of joy every, every time I smell that Chanel aldehyde combo. But I think a whole video of me crying wouldn't go down terribly well, or maybe it might be appropriate for a very different sort of channel. So let us try and articulate and put things into words for you. So as I have said before, as you know very well, number five is what we now consider to be a classic floral aldehyde composition in the sense that it's got that beautiful blend of sparkling champagne bubble, light bulb flashing, arctic chill aldehydes at the top. And then it goes into a really, really beautiful, but crucially abstract floral heart of rose and ylang ylang and jasmine. It's very, very difficult to pick out a particular bouquet. That's what makes the, the, the blend so amazing. And then it goes into a, a sandal woody patchouli like base, but, but, but again, very, very abstract. Number two is, uh, sorry, number two. Number 22 is a very similar, if, if not actually the same in structure, but with the emphasis changed. So here in number 22, we've got what feels like a massive overdose of the aldehydes so that it, it feels as though everything is rushing closer towards heaven. So I think we've said before something along that the analogy that we've drawn in the past on this channel is that number five feels like you are hearing choirs of angels singing, whereas number 22 is you actually being lifted straight up to the heavens and being confronted face to face with that with that choir of angels. I think what 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 also pushes things in that direction is that number 22 has a more marked uh, incense note but I should say that that seems to come out much more in the EDT and the EDP than it does in the extra. Um, David says, number 22 for me is too much of solar heaven. The aldehydes are way beyond me. I mean, yes, it is It is aldehydes on, on angelic celestial steroids. I think, I think you have to, if, if it works for you, then, then it is magical. It, it is like being transported to, to another world, you know, to an alternate dimension. But if it doesn't work on you, then I, then I get that it can be a little, a little bit like chalk across a blackboard. My mum, for instance, I think can't take the, the aldehydes in these compositions that they, they just give her a headache. And, you know, I guess, I guess that's a shame if it happens. Some of us could, it could be a combination of being hyperosmic and anosmic to various things that just makes them come across as a bit too harsh. Um, I don't get incense in the EP, says Woozy, interesting. Uh, Juan says, I made it, but I'm going to restart when this live is over. Thank you very much. It'll be it'll be here for you for ages. But um, I, can't, I can't spend ages swooning on these things because you need to know what the perfumes are going to be. And I've officially only actually done one from this list. This is, this, oh, sticking to the hour is going to be interesting. So let's pop that there. Okay. Now we are going to go much, much, much further into uh, in, into Chanel's history. In fact, we're going to come to, to the 21st century. 
uh, for a scent that, that that was first created in um, EDT form, as far as I have been able to discover, uh, in 2007, as part of the Exclusif range, made by Jacques Polge with the collaboration of Christopher Sheldrake, as I believe all of the Exclusives were. Then in 2016, we got it as an EDP. And then in 2019, Holly, well done. Then in 2019, we got it as an Extrait, and that is the version that I would like to share with you today. It is Coromandel. There you go. Um, the, 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 the design of these boxes is, is uh, the, the packaging is just just it's just classiness itself. It's classiness incarnate, isn't it? Or in 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 flaconate. There's the extra. Um, I was so pleased I, I, when when I got I, I I did a little bit of a binge. Some of some of the um, extras I was fortunate enough to get from the brand, but a lot of them I just thought. I'm not. I'm not waiting to be sent them. I'm just. I'm just going to. I'm just going to purchase them. Uh, right. Let us smell this. I adore um, Coromandel in EDT and EDP form as well, and I adore it. Uh, really, really, really love it on my better half. Um, how do you find the EDP of it? Says Woozy. It, uh, yeah, I think I've just answered that question. What are people? Coromandel. Coromandel. Um, people are saying Sue. Sue S is asking: Is twenty two extra the version you would recommend? Quite frankly, I think I would recommend that you have both the EDP and the X-ray and you scour the internet to see if somebody is selling a bottle in good condition of the of the EDT. Um, the EDT was pretty special. I think the EDP maybe just has a touch less room to 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 breathe, um, but it, it's it's beautiful. Right. So this is Coromandel. It's just, it's just perfect. So some of it. You need to put these on skin, Mr. P says, David. Yes, I know there's a bit of me that's thinking, oh, this is sacrilege, putting, you know, just dipping blotters into x-rays. But I, but I, I, I can't, there's too many. I can't, if I put all of these on skin. And I also made the mistake, and I never thought I would use the word mistake in this context. I also made the mistake this morning of wearing a few drops of a vintage Abbey Rouge EDT that I've got. And of course, I've been able to smell nothing but that all day. So no, I'd, 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 there is, there is, there is no room left on this skin anymore for um, extras. Um, okay. See, I, I know, I know when a perfume is sort of verging towards greatness, when I actually find myself unable to string a sentence together about it, but. Coromandel is just the most, the most knee weakening, swoon inducing, um, patchouli and benzoin composition with just the most elegant um, kind of Dr. Zhivago, Julie Christie and Dr. Zhivago elegance, white chocolate note, powdery white chocolate note at the top. And then and then a patchouli that manages to be, again, elegant, but also just, just, just funky enough to announce its presence as patchouli, but it never gets overly dirty. It's so, so, so seductive. Um, probably one of the most seductive Chanel's actually, because I guess, I guess th there's something a bit more more overtly sensuous about it compared to number five, which which has got that more kind of intellectual bent to it, I suppose, because of the aldehydes. Or, or number five somehow manages to be sensuous and chaste. Uh, I mean, number five manages to be lots and lots of things. But Coromandel, it, it is just that bit more physical. You know, there are, there are no angels in Coromandel. Coromandel is, is earthbound bodies, very, very earthly bodies. But Coromandel also makes me think of something that I was um, considering as I was putting together the list for this video. And actually, I would be very interested for, for your take on this, uh, regardless of whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording. Because um, I was trying to think, OK, how do I sum up the Chanel style? Because a lot of people have said, a lot of commentators and writers have said in the past that Chanel perfumes have a very, very haute couture quality. And I guess I know what that means, but it's also one of those 
phrases or terms that sort of means everything and nothing. And I was thinking, in 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 terms of notes, I think it's 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 difficult to um, to find a common thread. But in terms of a style, I suppose something that makes Chanel Chanel is that generally speaking, I mean, there are exceptions, obviously there are exceptions, but generally speaking, the perfumes tend towards a kind of abstraction. But also, I think the best ones seem to um, aim for this kind of notion of idealistic perfection. A lot of them, when I smell them, I just think, oh my goodness, these are perfect. They almost feel like they could have been composed by those angels that I was referring to in relation to number 22. I mean, obviously, I, I don't think they're all perfect. As you know, there are, there are some that I think are far from perfect. And yet they have a kind of top button done up quality, most of them, that feels as though they are striving for that supremely well cut shape um, that, that, that they just want they want nothing to be out of place. You know, Rodrigo Flores Rue, the perfumer that I've been fortunate enough to have um, uh, interviewed a few times, says that when he composes a perfume, he always tries to go for the olfactory equivalent of, of the stone in the boot or the pebble in the boot, the pebble in the shoe, just this one note that will make you go, what the heck is that? This is interesting. I want to find out a bit more. Um, but I don't think Chanel go for that. I think Chanel go for the exact opposite. They just want everything to be so seamless and so um self-contained um that th it feels like a kind of a, a perfection chanel is the mozart of perfumery says sue uh herb says i love chanel's but they're very serious and almost humorless in a way or haughty yeah i get it. there isn't a lot of humor in the range generally speaking i mean i think chance is where they tried to go for something a, a little bit more humorous and also you could say coco mademoiselle kind of um yeah, kind of. Uh, smooth, blended and formal, says Cynthia. Chanel's the greatest designer brand for fragrances with the purest florals, says Time to Musk Up. Uh, Lynn Laglaire says, idealistic perfection, that's a very good overall characterization. Yeah, but ha have a think about it. See if you've come up with any more ideas. Like a Persian rug with the one imperfect stitch, says Rich Mitch. Yeah, that, that sort of thing. Uh, for the X-rays, oh, this is somebody giving tips on how to wear the X-rays. Paul Selection says, for the X-rays, I syringe them to small spray bottles for easy application. Good idea. I so need to get a move on. Okay, so we have we've basically only done two from the actual top 10 list. Um, so that was Coromandel. I promise I will try to go off on tangents less and less. And next up, we go back in time. So we go to 1974 uh, for Ascent by Henri Robert, who was in-house perfumer at the time and produced some real masterpieces for the brand. Uh, this is a scent that is hard to get in this particular formulation, and this this isn't a vintage, uh, I, because I, I tried best as I could to get an EDT of this for myself, because it was as an EDT that originally came out, and it crystal. Okay, I, I just love this stuff. Um, you can still find still on on the website i think the edt is proving a lot harder to find than the um edp and if you do find it somewhere and you like um those super 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 crisp um no let's try facing it the correct way super super crisp um elegant cold grass crunching under your feet sense then you you, you, you need to get Cristal. Wore Cristal yesterday, so transparent, says Prof Melvin. Yes, um, Cristal really deserves better treatment from Chanel, says Holly Bond. Uh, love Cristal, very formal yet easygoing. Chypre says Herb, yes. And a lot of their 70 cents did have that. Oh, this is so good. Let me just label the blotter. Um, it's it's very green in, in, the, in that 1970s way. Um, Oh, Angie says, it's the opposite here in the US. Interesting. The EDT is on the website, but they don't sell the EDP here. Do you wear Cristal personally, says Sue? I I, I do. I mean, I, I have done. I, I, I adore wearing it. It reminds me of a beautiful snowy day, says Pax Lingua Franca, with a sky blue like a Tiffany box and the sun sparkling prisms everywhere. I'm not going to be able to do better than that description because we're completely on the same wavelength with Cristal. Um... Natasha F says, I remember a very elegant French woman in the 80s wearing the original formulation of Cristal. Her name was Dominique. And you know what that makes me think of? And I love these tangents. 
Krzysztof Kieślowski, my favorite director, the late Krzysztof Kieślowski, for his uh, in for the second part of his Three Colors trilogy in Three Colors White, he cast um, Julie Delpy as as a woman who, on the on the face of it, um, was uh, fairly cold. I suppose I think there were reasons why she came across like that, and she was called Dominique, and I would imagine she would have worn something like Cristal. Um, so it is, as has already been said, a herbal citrusy sheep with a beautiful be uh, grassy note, mossy note in the base, um, and almost cologne-like herbal facets. It doesn't come across as overtly floral. It, it, it's much more herbal aromatic, which is, I think, maybe why um, guys, if we're being stereotypical, can... Um, can uh, can pull it off. Um, and also interesting comparing it with Clarence's Eau de Namizante. I've always thought there were lots of similarities with them, but Eau de Namizante feels like it's got the citruses um, emphasized, whereas Cristal has got the mosses and the base and the sort of more overtly sheep quality emphasized. Um, the more fruity sheeps, the better for me, says Time to Musk Up. Yes, okay, so I suppose you, you would sort of go in more in the direction of Mitsuko and those sorts of compositions. Right, we, we are speeding up. So I've done Cristal and I'm going to stick with the same perfumer. So Monsieur Henri, we're going to go back in time, although we're going to stick with a sheep, but a very different sort of sheep, because it's one that... Um, I'm so pleased is still in production and is still made, but isn't talked about very much because it's this. It's Chanel's Pour Monsieur from 1955. Um, this is the EDT. There is also, uh, or there certainly was an intense version, but I've always thought this was this was superior. Um, so yes, Pour Monsieur in EDT, says Woozy. You're absolutely right. Let's have a spray. This bottle is very, um, it has a lot of sentimental value because uh, some of you who've watched a lot of my videos will be aware of this story. Back in back in 2010, it was, wasn't it? Was that the year when the Icelandic volcano disrupted travel across much of the world, certainly over Europe? So back in 2010, when the volcano erupted, Madame Persilais and I were in Turkey, and we weren't able to fly back. But uh, for lots and lots of reasons, we absolutely had to make our way back as quickly as possible. So we got on a train, various trains, I should say, all the way from um, Istanbul to, to to Calais in France. And I remember as a treat to myself, because we'd been on this epic, really, really amazing journey, just so memorable. I mean, it was it was fantastic that it all worked out well in the end. But when we made it to Calais, I thought, right... I need to buy a perfume to mark this occasion, and so it, it was. It was just. It was just a little perfumery in in Calais, and I thought I don't have a bottle of uh, Pour Monsieur in my collection anymore. I need to buy that. So that's what I did. It, I mean, has, it's got nothing to do with the actual smell of it, but but that's why I will always treasure that bottle. Now, again, just beautiful. So 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 good. So Pour Monsieur. Is in fact actually let's compare it with Cristal because I don't think I've done that for a while. They're both sheep. Yeah, Pour Monsieur is 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 more obviously a sheep in the sense that it's got that that bitter quality that we expect from the moss note that that makes a sheep a sheep that bitter metallic inky quality. Um, Oh, Woozy says, a lot of people put Antaeus in their Chanel Hall of Fame and exclude Pour Monsieur, which is perfume sacrilege, in my opinion. I'm sure that, according to a lot of you, I will be committing sacrilege as well by leaving out some of your favourites, but I guess that's how it goes. Um, so, Pour Monsieur is, is, is much quieter, the way you would have expected a 1955 masculine scent to be, much less diffusive, much more sort of dignified and restrained and suave. Um, and it's it's almost doing that thing where it's somewhere in between a sheep and a fougere in the sense that you can you can feel a, a maybe a lavender note coming through, and the the aromatics the herbs are pushed out as well. It's less overtly citrusy, and it's 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 drier. It it it's it's a lot drier. Um, 
and it's and it's wonderful and i could smell it i could you could you, i could just sit here smelling it for ages and you would have to watch me doing that and i really really hope that chanel never stop making it when you um smell it next to cristal you do see that cristal does clearly have some florals in there although they 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 they're not made especially prominent um okay so that was pour monsieur and we will do one more on the list before we go on another tangent and actually it's interesting that you mentioned that one uh woozy because um i i, I couldn't do a, a chanel top 10 without mentioning this so this takes us straight to the 80s again 1981 from jacques polge it is um antaeus which, which, which actually happens to be one of my favorite perfumes of all time certainly one of my personal favorites of all time um chanel oh time to mask up says chanel removed pour monsieur edt in america yeah i think the edt is another one that is proving a, a little bit difficult to find now antaeus is 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 almost a little bit of an outlier in the in the Chanel universe because I guess it it made perfect sense when it came out in the eighties because it is a very very eighty scent and it is very much there with you know it's like the sort of Chanel version of Kouros maybe to some extent the Chanel version of Poison and the Chanel version of um, Fahrenheit. Um, but now, nice lid purse lace. Does it come in correctly fitting? Says Woozy. No, because I lost it and this is actually the lid of the. Um, the, the body lotion so it's not it's not the proper lid so this isn't chanel's fault the fact that i've got a wonky lid um yeah now now when i smell it i think wow chanel were obviously trying to do something a little bit uh, bolshier in in 1981 because it, it 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 feels like the least chanel of of the chanel perfumes that i see here and you know here and here the ones that are coming up um but but never mind. Um, I think it's fantastic. I think well, you know absolutely one of the greatest um, uh, masculines of all time. It's 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 a great big brash uh, leather relying heavily on the you know teeth bearing claws showing uh, effect of isobutyl quinoline, but also it's just got the 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 gentlest. Um, most well judged in terms of sweetness note of beeswax and sandalwood in the base really really gorgeously um resinous i'm sure there's incense in there i'm sure there's patchouli in there um james says antaeus is strong and very masculine yet still remains absolutely elegant and polite just about right because i think i think you wouldn't mess with it either um i always thought that um I was talking about perfume adverts the other day, wasn't I? I think in relation to Dune. Um, and perfume ads in the 70s and the 80s, a lot of the time were great because they didn't, the, the makers of them didn't feel that they needed to rely on famous faces. And so they could present something that was a, a more abstract and more expressionist. And I, again, thought the, the Antaeus ads were good because they showed, um, I'm not even sure you ever saw the guy's face. Did you see the guy's face? I can't remember because you saw this, you know, impressively physiqued model um, carrying, uh, I think, uh, the kind of obelisk that was in the shape of a bottle. And yet there was something about the image that, as you say, um, who was it, James, managed to come across as um, powerful and virile, but also somehow protective. You know, there wasn't anything sort of overly aggressive about that image. Um, Adele says, I love Antaeus, probably my favorite male Chanel perfume. It is just beautiful. Um, it, 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 is, it is fantastic. It is fantastic. But also very, very 80s, um, which, you know, it, it, it can't help. It was a perfume of its time. Um, and, I and I think that's why when you wear it now, um, you, you do feel as though you're wearing that something that speaks of the past. It is it is a little bit less timeless than some five or number 22. OK, time for another bit of a tangent, because there is one that I think is a huge, huge, huge favorite of a lot of you out there. But it isn't in my list. And I just thought I will give it an, an honorable mention. Also in honor of Madame Persolais, because it is it is one of her favorite Chanel's. In fact, it may well be her favorite Chanel. But um, I have, 
I, I really like it, but I've, I've never really been able to completely head over heels, fall in love with it. Um, and we're not, we're not going to smell it. I'm just going to mention it just to say that, you know, I'm not ignoring it, but it's this, it's cocoa. So, okay, now I, now I feel that you're really, really going to start hating me now. Oh, lots of people guessing cocoa. Well done. Cocoa, for the record, is from 1984 by uh, Jacques Polge. Still, still with us, still in production. Um, and... I'm, I'm, I did it deliberately in this segment of the video in um, relation to Antaeus, because I think it, it is also a product of its time. Um, it, it comes very much on the heels of opium in the sense that it's doing trying to do that great big um, ambery, resinous, uh, 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 what's the other word, a balsamic thing with a kind of orangey fruit, fruity note at the top. Um, and who's saying, I don't like it, says Sue. Now, see, I, I absolutely want to be clear. I don't dislike it. I just don't think that it's good enough for me to put it in this top 10 video. I don't dislike it at all. And why don't I think it deserves a place in the top 10 video? Maybe because I've never found it to be as distinctive as I think it should be. Um, when, uh, when Chanel wanted to do the big butch 80s masculine thing, they did Antaeus. They they went all out and they succeeded. When they tried to do um, the great big ambery resinous 80s feminine thing, they did Coco. And I don't think that Coco is quite in the same league as Opium and Poison. I, I think there, Chanel slightly became a victim of that whole striving for perfection thing. Um, but, but, you know, this is just me. I'm As I say, I know a lot of people who absolutely adore it and think it is one of the best things that Chanel have ever done. I love Coco, says Adele. I only have the EDT, though. Coco doesn't like me, says Caro Coffee. Instant headache. Interesting. David says Coco Noir is a really nice bridge of Coco and Mademoiselle. Cynthia says the very first perfume I ever bought. Wow. What I do love is the Coco adverts that they did over the years, like there was the one with Vanessa Paradis and lots of other ones that I can't even remember now, some really, really wonderful ones. Um, <laughs> I've just seen some of the comments. I'm not going to read some of the funny ones. Cutie Camille says, love Coco EDP. Uh, so, so there we are. Back to the list. We have got five left to do. It must be five left to do. So next, I want to take us um, back into the 21st century. And this is one that nearly didn't make it. And I think that had it not made it, I may well have gone for including Coco. So which 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 is, you know, shows you that I do rate it very, very, very highly, but just not highly enough. This one nearly didn't make it because I still remain unconvinced. Not well, I don't, yeah, I'm not 100 percent convinced about its transition from um EDT to EDP. I absolutely, absolutely uh, love the EDT. I adore the EDT, and I have uh, at least one completely sealed bottle of the EDT because I never want to be without the EDT. I really like the EDP as well, but I think it lost something in the transition, and it's this. It's Belle Respiro uh, by Jacques Paul and Christopher Sheldrake. Um, the EDT we got in 2007, and then it got converted to EDP, same as with all of the other exclusives in 2016. Um, let's spray it. Uh, what, are, what are people going to be saying about this one? I think that one of the problems with um, Bell Respiro is that when you know the EDT, you are just so conscious of of how different it now is in its transition from EDT to EDP. And had I just smelt the EDP first, I probably would have fallen in love with it anyway. Um, Woozy says, I agree, the EDP is a touch too strident and harsh. Yeah, I, I think it's just a bit too dense, trying a little bit too hard. But what, what, what's, you know, what's this perfume all about? It's another one in the vein of the green outdoorsy um, windswept Chanel's, really, really gorgeously windswept. Reminds me a little bit of the Paris Edinburgh scent that they did last year, Paris Edinburgh. Um, and I still, th th this is this is the image that I put into the into my book, where, and I included Bel Respiro in the book. I still get exactly the same image when I smell it. It feels like 
standing on the edge of a cliff somewhere um, on the, you know, on the, at the coast of the Mediterranean, on the edge of the Mediterranean. You're standing on the edge of a cliff. You're looking out at the sea. You've got a beautiful field behind you. You've got the wind blowing through your hair. The wind is bringing the sea breeze straight to you. You've got the sun shining on your face. And it feels like you are on the the, the, the edge of infinity. You're, it feels like you're on the edge of eternity. You've got nothing blocking your view up ahead. You, all you can see in front of you is the horizon. And it feels like endless opportunity, endless optimism, endless hope. Um, the, the EDP, what's time to mask up saying? The added amber in the dry down of the EDP makes it too thick and it's not supposed to be. I would be inclined to agree. I think the EDP does just, the, 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 there are things blocking that view of infinity in the EDP, right? So there's, maybe there's an island in the way, or maybe there's a bit of a haze that is preventing the sunlight from being as crisp and clear as it, used, uh, as, it, as it should be. The EDP was just so fantastically crisp, crisp, crisp. It was, it was like you know you you could add to that image as well that you're just wearing this this perfectly beautifully pressed white cotton shirt or maybe even linen. Um, but the EDP doesn't do that. The EDP starts going towards as as time to mask up says a kind of ambery soapy base which is fine but i think again i just keep saying because we know what it was we lament the the, the loss of that so much um frank chaitan says i did like paria de edinburgh could you compare the two well Bel Bel Respiro is definitely much more complex but but there are points of comparison i think the edinburgh is more herbal drier mossier darker you know i, I don't feel a lot of sunshine i don't think in 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 edinburgh Okay, uh, I will say, I will sort of take 30 seconds out at this point to say that you are watching a special top 10 episode of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, live on YouTube, where I'm running down the uh, my top 10 list of the best Chanel perfumes. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please, please do consider doing so by um, subscribing below and also clicking on the little bell that'll give you a notifications of when new videos are out. And also please do consider supporting my work. You will find information about how you can do that also in the video description below. But we have got one, two, three, four to go in this top 10. So we've done better for time. Please like the video, says Sue. Yes, please like the video, but only if you like the video, okay? You know, if, if you don't like the video, I'm very sorry, but um, please don't like the video then. Um, I don't feel a lot of sunshine in Edinburgh. Truer words were never uttered, says Rich Mitch. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, now let's go back to the 70s again. Uh, back to Monsieur Henri Robert. He's he's represented three times in this video because we've already done Cristal. We've done uh, Pour Monsieur. There is no way that I could have left this one out. Uh, but I'm presenting a, a, a different iteration of it from the one that was the original. Um, this is, of course, number 19. You know, you, I, 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 I don't think this could be left off. Number 19 is just extraordinary, just amazing. My dear friend, Neil Chapman, who writes the Black Narcissus Perfume blog, if you haven't checked out his blog, do, do check it out. He considers this to be one of his favourite uh, compositions of all time, if not his absolute favourite. But this is the EDP, of course, which would have come... Uh, quite a bit after the 70s. I, I don't know exactly when number 19 EDP came out. It may have been late 80s, early 90s. I do also have an extrait. I was very fortunate enough to be able to find an extrait of vintage number 19. Um, but I've, I've sort of brought out that particular bottle quite a few times on this channel. So I thought, let's let's get let's get the EDP out today. Um, number 19 is interesting because it's also a little bit of a shape shifter. I think depending on depending on how each bottle has been looked after, depending on the weather, depending on, um, you know, what concentration it is. Um, it seems to be more or less vetty very. Uh, there, there are some versions that seem to immediately go to a, a surprisingly pronounced vetiver note, and then somewhere the vetiver isn't brought out until much, much later. Your juice is turning yellowish green, says time to musk up. Yes, it, it, it has turned quite green. Number 19, Poudre is underrated, says Woozy. Yes, I think so. I, I was quite taken with Poudre. Um, 
Uh, oh, Catherine says, I hate the wire mother comments. I wear this. Have people compared number 19 to uh, the wire mother? Th that is harsh. That is harsh. And I don't agree with that at all. I didn't realize people were going quite that far in their criticism of number 19. I wear this and want to wear a silk robe and prance around in the spring breeze, says Catherine. I knew a lady who wore this who was strong but warm on the inside. See, I I've said this before about number 19. A lot of people can seem to read it as cold. And I do not agree with that at all. I just consider it to be formal and reserved. And those are attributes that we don't seem to appreciate the value of so much anymore in the, in, in the Western world. And they are actually attributes that are extremely important and valuable because I think if you don't have a certain amount of formality and restraint, then it makes informality and friendliness a little bit meaningless. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't make them special anymore. I mean, I think. I think it's. It is special when a relationship goes from being formal to informal, from formal to friendly. Um, and I've never, ever, ever read number nineteen as being cold or standoffish in any way. But I have read it as being um, professional. You know, somebody who is not going to start referring. You know, going to on first name terms with you straight away. Um, who is not going to reveal every single detail of their life on social media. Um, Ileana says, please don't say number 19 is reserved. It is intellectual. Yeah, I'll go along with that as well. Um, but you see, I don't think reserved is a bad thing. Um, let, let's say circumspect. Uh, I, I, I don't think those are negative qualities at all. In fact, I think I would rather make friends with somebody who just reveals themselves a little bit at a time than 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 someone you know who who just sort of bears everything in one go. Uh, Marie says, "I love number nineteen. It's the perfume of my mother who shares her birthday, the nineteenth of August, with Coco Chanel. To me, it doesn't smell cold as I get honey sweetness from it. Um, we should actually describe what uh, how it smells. So it 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 is extremely green, but also has got that famous hyacinth note. So it's a green white floral, which I suppose is what a lot of people read as being." cold. Again, I don't agree. A beautiful galbanum note at the top, which is also super green. Um, and, and then and then that vetiver in the base. And so it's 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 a kind of strange green woody floral um that manages to now come across as, as quite gender fluid. Um oh, Sue says unless you smell like a cupcake, you're reserved and standoffish. You see, I get what you mean exactly. I think if people think people think that if you if you if you don't fit that particular mode, then 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 you must be standoffish, um, and I, I don't know. I don't I don't agree with that at all. Um, uh, Natalie says I like it on paper, but cannot stand it on my skin. Um, am I the only person who gets really bad performance from number nineteen? Says Woozy. I, I'd imagine you're not, but but you know it'll work differently on different people. James says I love number 19's opening more compared to the dry down. The opening is absolutely gorgeous. See, I find the dry down interesting because, as I say, it gets more and less vetiver like depending on when it's being worn. Um, it's it's it is beautiful and and it is a classic. I don't I don't think any num uh, Chanel list could be without it. And we have got three to go. So we need three to go and 12 minutes to go. Right, we need to get a move on. So next up, uh, we go, uh, for the next two, we're going to go back to the 20s and to Monsieur Ernest Beau. And I'm very fortunate that I've got x-rays of both of these. And this, this is just extraordinary as well. So from 1926, I would like to share with you here, Bois des Îles. Oh, this, is, this, is, this is heavenly, but... If I just had one wish I could make about it, it's that it would be a little bit more diffusive. It is extremely long lasting. And, and maybe I think maybe that is the point. Maybe this is the Chanel scent that you really need to get up close and personal to. It is just not going to um, shout. It is not going to draw excessive attention to itself. But when you really get up close to it, Boy, does it absolutely break your heart. Um, let's do a little bit of a clearing. Oh, those twenty, those twenties Chanel scents. I mean, obviously these are not their original formulations. There's no way they could be. But this, this is just the most divine, calming. 
snuggly, buttery, biscuity sandalwood scent with a beautiful, beautiful rose heart. I couldn't get past the gingerbread note, says Woozy. Ah, that's a shame. That's a shame. Maybe, maybe you just need to wear it a few more times. Is it your favourite sandalwood, says Woozy? Um, hmm. I think I've done a sandalwood video, haven't I? I can't remember now. No, I wouldn't say it's my favourite sandalwood, but don't put me on the spot now. I don't know what my favourite sandalwood would be. Suleika says, I love Wadazil, but less on my skin. The opening is very attractive to my nose, but there's something in the tropical flower note which doesn't mix well with my skin. Wadazil versus Samsara, says Herb. Okay, Samsara is more overtly jasmine-y, okay? And it's, 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 Samsara wants to tell, you know, if I were to spray Samsara now, I think there'd be people in Singapore who would be aware that I'd sprayed Samsara. Wadazil is the complete opposite of that. Wadazil wants you to come really, really close to it. Um, and, and again, Boadazil is absolutely one of those striving for perfection Chanel's. It is so seamless. It is, it is like a sort of orb of sandalwood that is dis descending down. Or maybe, maybe it's not descending. Maybe you get into such a beautiful contemplative state as, 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 as you're, you're in this temple of, of Boadazil that you actually met, uh, levitate and you rise up to this perfect orb of sandalwood. Um, it's 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 just heavenly. It is it is absolutely heavenly, um, and I wish I could spend more time smelling it. But I need to do a few more before we run out of time. So that's Brazil, and I think a lot of you have guessed what the next one is going to be from 1927, also from uh, Ernest Bow. It had to be here. If if you're a regular follower, regular viewer, you knew that this would have to be here because this is just again. The, 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 the most the, the most perfect leather. Queer de Russi, um, I, I, again, I think one from the exclusives that when it went to the, from EDT to EDP, it lost a little bit of something, although the EDP is still pretty damn good. Um, Utterly Divine, says Holly, this must be one of the most suave, one of the most sophisticated, suede leathers, birch tarry leathers with that fantastic iris note ever, ever, ever made. Um, Pradeep says, Westerners just can't seem to do a good sandalwood note. This one is no exception. Ah, interesting. I'm, I guess you're referring to Badazil still. Um, uh, Woozy says the EDT is more of a pure leather, referring to Pietro Russi, while the EDP is a leather-based perfume. Interesting point. I got a tiny bottle of Pietro Russi X-Tray, says Freddie, from the 40s. Amazing stuff, even with the bottle age. Um, why is Pietro Russi so soft and quiet, says Natalia, or maybe I became an anosmic to the EDP. Um, hmm, I see, I never saw it as that quiet. Anyway, I think I've already described it to you that this is, this is again, another one of those ones like uh, the one that I can't remember, Coromandel, which is very, very earthbound. You know, this is, this is as far as Chanel will go in terms of getting, getting their hands dirty, okay? This is, this is the furthest that Chanel will go in terms of being um, funky, because um, that leather note doesn't hold back, and yet, even though it's very, very, very markedly birch tarry, and and it's got it's got um, presence. It's got teeth. It's got claws. Right. It also somehow manages to be just effortlessly, effortlessly, endlessly elegant. Um, it's like I don't know. It's it, it's like you know it, it <laughs> sort of Indiana Jones, but in a dinner jacket. Um, so you know that actually what he wants to be doing is going off somewhere, cracking a whip at something so that he he, get, he gets a crystal out of some cave, but but he looks pretty good in a dinner jacket as well. Uh, Woozy says, Creator Roussi EDT purists say that Parfum is a good substitute if you can put up with the bottle format. Um, James says, seeing all those Chanel bottles sitting next to each other on your table is truly majestic. I know, it, it, it builds up quite a collection, doesn't it? When, when the aesthetic is so carefully worked out um, that the lines basically all match in some way, it, it makes a pretty picture, doesn't it? Um, and uh, I haven't labeled this one. We are on the last one. So the final one, what do you think it's going to be, by the way? 
let me just let me just sort of stall for a few seconds while we get some guesses. This is going to be number 10 in the top 10 Chanel perfumes, which was actually kind of a top 11 because we included number five, but we didn't count it. What are people going to say? Uh, Egoist says Eco Jock. Le Lyon says Klein. Le Lyon says Natalia. Pradeep says number five. Well, number five, we, we dealt with at the beginning of the video. Um, uh, Le Lyon says Anna. Le Lyon says Natasha. Le Lyon <laughs> says Over the Moon. 31 Rue Cambon says Catherine West. I should maybe just take a couple of seconds to say that Egoist is one that I rate very highly, but it's not on this list. I, 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 I thought about including that on there. Um, and also another one from the exclusive that I really, really love, as a lot of you will know, is Boy. Really, really beautifully delicate, gentle, uh, lavender, fougere composition. But um, yeah, you've guessed, you've guessed. It's it's this, it's Le Lyon from 2020, although it went on sort of wider distribution in 2021. And I think um, Chanel have actually done extremely well to have released a perfume in the last couple of years that I think is, is one of the best things they've ever done. And it's by Olivier Polge, Jacques Polge's son, as you know, who um, is current in-house nose at the brand. Um, I, I, I did a whole video on Le Lyon, so I'm not, I'm not going to dwell on it for ages here. I will link to that video either there. No, hang on. Where do the links come up? There or, or in the video description below. It's probably easier to do that. Um, but I will just say that it's just, it, it, it's, it, it's, 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 it's one of those kind of perfect love child perfumes that you never knew, you, you never realized you were missing and you never realized you wanted until it came wafting below your nose and you thought oh my goodness where have you been all my life and it's just like this absolutely perfectly balanced impeccably balanced meeting point of Garlin Chalimar and Chanel's own Cuir de Russie and their own Coromandel and it it manages to be greater than the sum of those parts okay so it so it isn't just a Chalimar substitute or a Cuir de Russie substitute it is its own thing it's 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 got a, a, just the most indescribably gorgeous sparkling bright bergamot note at the top and then it goes into a fantastic leather and those balsams and resins in the base and and it, le lion is the best name for it because there is something majestically leonine about it you know a kind of resting lion you admire it from a distance um, you almost sort of pay homage to it. You absolutely follow its orders and its instructions, and you you do not you do not mess with it. Oh, and Cynthia, thank you very much for reminding me. Alu Sensuel, I love very much as well, but again, um, not 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 for the top ten. So we have just 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 made it in under the hour. Um, some say Le Lyon has been reformulated. 22 times already, says Time to Musk Up. They call it Le Cub, shadow of its former self. Really? I haven't heard that. I said, well, anything's possible, but I don't know about 22 times. The bergamot opening is so bright and luminous, says Seleka, and the labdanum, thanks for mentioning that note, and leather makes it much darker. Such a great equilibrium and harmony between light and shade. Couldn't agree more. Listen, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you're watching the recording, please feel free to leave a comment. I usually get around to all of the comments uh, sooner or later. And uh, send me suggestions for brands that you think deserve the top 10 treatment. But until the next time I see you, stay safe, be good, and um, I hope to smell something with you soon. Take care now.